What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today is a day highly anticipated, very pumped for this. We're going to be checking out the Logitech G502 Lightspeed, essentially the wireless G502. Been waiting about uh, four years now, and it's finally here. I'm sure a lot of you have been waiting as well. So in this review, we'll go over it all for you guys, taking a look at it, the features, pros and cons, talking about my experience in case you want to pick up the G502 Lightspeed. Now, taking a look at it, you still have those same 11 programmable buttons, the illuminated G logo, the DPI light indicators, and at first glance, you might not even notice anything different at all. Same design, same ergonomics, and that's what we loved about the G502. Getting this powered on and working is as simple as turning on the power switch on the bottom. Then you have two options for connectivity. More on this in a second. On the bottom then is also a spot for the removable power play module. And the bottom cover comes off where you could still, you know, beef this up with those optional weight sets. Where the cable used to be now houses a micro USB slot for charging. Or you can you know, just plug this in and use it wired if you want. But uh, don't do that. That defeats the whole purpose of the wireless mouse. A braided cable is included inside the box for you. As I mentioned before, for those weights, it comes with this little carrying case. Inside here are the six weights. There are four two gram ones and two four gram weights. You have the USB receiver in here and a USB extension plug. So option one for connectivity is just using this with that receiver. You plug it into any available USB slot on your PC and it'll pair automatically. But second is with PowerPlay. Logitech has their PowerPlay mouse pad from 2017. And this essentially, when paired with the G502 Lightspeed, gives you endless power and battery life, and then no need to use that USB receiver. So good news for current PowerPlay users, if you have the mouse pad or a current compatible mouse, you can just essentially plug this into your PC, and then once you have the PowerPlay module, you put it on the bottom of your mouse, and then whenever you use this with the PowerPlay mouse pad, one, it'll just automatically pair and connect for you, so you don't have to also have the USB receiver for the G502 Lightspeed. And then also, it'll just be charging your mouse whenever you're not using it. It's the friction, so whenever it's on the surface of the PowerPlay mouse pad, your mouse will be charged, so you can never run out of battery, essentially. But battery life over USB without the PowerPlay is pretty damn impressive, I think. You get 48 hours with the default RGB lighting and around 60 hours with no lights on. So you can mess around with it, keep it simple like a static color, maybe at half brightness and you'll get it at around 50 plus hours. Odds are with this, it'll be lasting you around a week depending on your, you know, your gaming session and stuff like that, of course. For me, I charged it Friday, I'm filming Tuesday and I currently have around 50% battery life left. Moving on, the Hero Sensor returns with the 100 to 16,000 DPI capabilities. You have the adjustable report rate from 125 hertz to 1000 hertz at one millisecond response time. The 32-bit ARM processor also allows for onboard storage. So if you bring this with you somewhere, you're gonna have your DPI settings, your profiles and lighting all saved onto the mouse itself. Now comparing this visually to the wired G502, Goes without saying, but we get to ditch that cable. The size and shapes will remain unchanged, same button layout, but there is one slightly noticeable change. The hyper scroll wheel. This now has a rubber accent on the wheel itself for improved grip, and it's also more of a hollowed wheel as opposed to the more solid metal piece on the previous mice. Still feels the same, still works the same, still hyper scroll feature, which is really cool. You just now have that rubber coating, and it's also gonna help slightly cut down on the overall weight. Speaking of which, the one thing everyone wants to know about, the weight. Yes, it is lighter than the G502 Hero. This is 114 grams versus the Hero's 121 grams. So not by much, but it is still lighter. And they managed to rework the entire internals and still cut down a few grams while still integrating you know, the battery and the wireless technology. However, it's actually a lot lighter than you might think. So with the entire internal redesign making this possible, um, being straight up with you guys, it feels significantly lighter. It may only be seven grams on paper, but what was noticeable was the fact that we no longer have the added weight of the cable, which wasn't included in the mouse's overall weight before. That was an additional 40 grams, bringing the total weight of the G502 Hero to 161 grams versus now 114 grams on the light speed. That's definitely gonna be a lot more apparent now. And the second you hold this, you're gonna notice it. And if you wanted to, like I said before, add more weight to it, you can add the additional 16 grams from the optional weight set on the bottom of the mouse, but probably not, right? 
There's still the cutout near the center where you can put in four weights. And then you can also put two weights in the like the little module on the bottom here, which is removable. You can plug them in there and add some weight to the bottom of the mouse. But trust me, it feels a lot lighter. No cable, which was 40 grams itself. No longer have to worry about you know the tension or snagging. This feels significantly lighter, being straight up. Now before we get into my personal thoughts and opinions, we have the G-Hub software. And first is the lighting tab for picking your effects and the colors. You can do this for both the G logo and the DPI lights or sync them together, sync them with other Logitech G products. You know the drill. Next is the assignment tab for changing up the 11 programmable buttons. Anything from commands, keys, actions, macro, system controls, all that stuff. You can also then go in and enable the G shift, which is essentially like having a secondary command for these buttons on your mouse. Then it's the DPI tab for customizing the five onboard DPI settings. Easily adjust the speeds and the report rate here. Then you'll notice up top, you can also have different profiles saved for individual games. And even some have their own like lighting integrations with light sync. But yeah, this is G-Hub. You've seen it before, probably. So breaking it all down as a long time user of the original G502 from the Proteus uh, Proteus Core, Proteus Spectrum, the Hero, and now the G502 Light Sync. For me, I've said it before in previous mice reviews, but it's a matter of muscle memory. I've been using that mouse for so long, four plus years now, and now the same designs and everything, but it's wireless. So when I got to you know, sit down, start playing with it, I had zero issues transitioning, obviously. I got all my previous data from like, you know, the DPI settings, put them on here so it all matched and everything was a dream. No issues with lag, nothing like that. Obviously with one millisecond response time, you're not gonna notice that pre pretty much. It's been really great, very smooth. And like I said before, it does feel lighter. Just not having that extra 40 grams of the cable on here, it's gonna be immediately noticeable when you start gaming with this. But now's the part where I can go on a little end rant here to bring this all together. And as a tech reviewer, I get tons of gaming peripherals in, tons of different mice. But as I've always said time and time again over the years, I'm so used to the G502 that it's still my all time favorite and I always go back to it. So call me bias if you will, but that's just my experience. That's my opinion. For me, for my hand, for just my muscle memory and everything, this is my favorite mouse and now we have a wireless version of it. I never once found the weight to be too much in the past. Like, yeah, it was heavier than some mice out there or a lot of mice out there, but it was never a deal breaker. There is this community out there of people who will weight shame the mouse just to make themselves feel better. It's kind of weird if you ask me. They call it a brick, but honestly, who cares? If it's too heavy for you, guess what? Don't use it. No one's forcing you. Would this have been cool to have been 100, like under 100 grams? Yes but 114 grams feels a lot lighter. And honestly, it's not a big issue. I've never once been in a gaming situation where the weight of this mouse has made me less better or worse in a situation. It just doesn't make sense. But there's a reason why this is one of the most popular selling mice of all time. There's a huge fan base behind it. You don't have to buy this. No one's forcing you, no one's making you. For the people out there who've been waiting for this, who have no issues with 114 grams now, uh, we're all gonna be happy. So you don't have to like it, but there's a reason why one of the top selling mice of all time got another re-release to be wireless. It's gonna make a lot of people happy. It's gonna sell extremely well. So call me biased if you will, but from everything I've tested, I always go back to this. I had one request, wireless, and it's finally here. So I'm very happy. Um, with that said, there is sort of one con, the price point it's $150, which is definitely pricey, but you look at the initial release price of the other Logitech uh, PowerPlay mice in the past and their light speed ones. I don't remember the name of it, uh, but they were also $150 at launch. So over time, yes, this will drop. Um, still pricey, especially if you want to pick up the PowerPlay mouse pad for an additional $100, but hey, I'll gladly spend that for this. I've been using this <laughs> four plus years, $150 for a wireless version of my favorite mouse, 10 out of 10 would recommend. So big thumbs up for me. For everyone out there who's been in the same boat, who's been waiting for this mouse, guys, it's finally here. So that'll wrap it up, my review of the Logitech G502 Lightspeed. I hope you enjoyed. If you wanna check it out, I'll put a link for you in the description down below. If you like this review, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button.
Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.